Okay. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, all across the globe. I am so excited, guys. We are back again. <laughs> Ask We're the back. nurse, Dr. Proctor. Doc, how are you doing today, my dear? <laughs> I'm good. I'm doing well, Kevin. Thank you. How about yourself? Uh, doing wonderful. Hey, guys, it's my beautiful cousin, Lady Jones. She's the best nurse, Dr. Proctor, in the world because she's the only one. That's Dr. T. Victoria Proctor, Lady Jones. Hey, real quickly, my wonderful. A wonderful cousin. She is a, a doctor of nursing practice. She's got a DPN, doctor of nursing practice. Also, too, she's holistic and health wellness professional for over 30 years. That's the main reason why we're here, guys, is to give you some better solutions on your gardening. Now, we're talking about gardening 101. We're still on that for a while because I'm in that category, guys. I'm just learning from my awesome cousin. She's helping us to get ready for inside gardening outside gardening but today we're going to be talking about some inside gardening today as well but guys i want to thank you those who are live right now those who are listening later on we're talking about gardening one-on-one -on -one. we want you guys to uh connect us with healthy eating healthy living and also just enjoying yourself as we talk about gardening today i'm just enjoying myself getting ready to go gardening <laughs> or in my case doc as well so thank you so much for your time Doc, we always give our guests and our wonderful uh, people who are on with us any opening statement, anything you want to say to the to the uh, folks out there listening. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, well, of course. I mean, I'm happy to be here. I, I feel like it's been a minute. I know we had to miss one, and, and, and I apologize to you for that. And I apologize yes. to the audience. Um, but here we are. Yes. Um, we're back. No, I'm just excited to be back. And yeah. I'm excited that we're not going to be looking at PowerPoints because now yeah. this time we're going to be like in the doing stage. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like each time we get together now, we're going to be seeing stuff. Yep. So yep. to your audience, I say hello. Thank you for coming back. And um, I hope <laughs> <laughs> it's time to dig in the dirt, guys. I, I hope that everyone's <laughs> kind of just excited about. You know, and and Kevin knows that. Um, you know, I, I'm actually a practicing Buddhist, and in Buddhism, there's a wonderful saying that I love so much. It it helps me emotionally. Yeah. It, there's a saying that says, "Winter always turns to spring." Mm. There's never been a time since time began where spring ever turned back to winter. Mm -hmm. But we can always rest assured that winter will always turn to spring. Wow. And, and basically what that means is hope. Yeah. That there's always hope. Yeah. And for me, winter's a tough time. Yeah. For many of us around the world, winter's yeah. a very hard time. Yeah. Even okay. Like yeah. So I'm just so happy that we are about, we are on the cusp of turning into spring. Yeah. Things are going to start popping. Yeah. And so I am so, so excited about that. Oh, thank you so much, Doc. Hey, Lee Jones, oh, this is uh, after nurse Dr. Proctor, Lee Jones with Dr. Proctor today on the network. Hey, guys, I want you to focus. We're going to be talking about gardening, okay? And the purpose here is to better your health, get you some Absolutely. education, knowledge, training, all the above. Also, too, a doc, as you know, as well, guys, you can get your children involved. As you know, summer's coming up soon, and I, you, oh, yeah. you need to give them some uh, action items, if you will, or some tasks, if you will, as it relates to gardening. Uh, so guys, pay attention. Doc's going to give you some great stuff today. We did kind of a pre-show uh, before we came on with you, so I know what's coming, and it's going to be <laughs> powerful, guys. So guys, pay attention. Get your sons and daughters and your nieces and nephews involved and all the above, but this is for the entire family. Doc, take it away. This is all for you today. Thank you so much, guys. This is Ask the Nurse, Dr. Proctor, Gardening 101. Thank you so much, cuz. Oh, you're again, Kevin, you're very welcome. And once again, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm, I'm excited because we actually get to do something. Yeah. Um, and I did share with you, Kevin, that I'm about two weeks behind schedule on some of my yeah. seats mm -hmm. uh, in terms of starting them just because my schedule has been kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe the timing is perfect. Maybe it was meant to be this way oh, yeah. so that I can actually uh, really demonstrate this with you all. Yeah. So what I want to do today is just literally show you what I'm about to do today. 
Yeah. And I just saved it for this presentation. Um, I'm behind on a few things. I'm behind on like broccoli and cabbage. I'm behind on my onions. So I didn't want to do them all. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I would just kind of show you all how I literally start my seeds yeah. inside. Yeah, it's going to be good. Okay. So yeah. I just picked a few that I'm going to share with you today. I'm going to do some. It's kind of hard to see these. And it doesn't matter, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I got a little packet of onions. I have a packet of giant mm -hmm. noble spinach. Yeah. So these little teeny packets. And I'll show you where these packets come from. And I also have some Swiss chard that I'm going to be planting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so I get these seeds that I'm about to show you. A while ago, I, I saw this um, awesome um, company that was selling these great wow. non-GMO seeds, heirloom seeds. Oh, so God. it's a kit, right? So I got two. Right. I got one with vegetables and I got one with herbs. Mm -hmm. And these seeds are great. If I am not mistaken, this whole pack, they're 100% non-GMO heirloom, uh, heirloom uh, non-hybrid. So this is the real deal. No genetic wow. modification, everything that's really natural. Yes. And um, if I am not mistaken, these things are good for about 10 years. Wow. Okay. Now, I cannot mm -hmm. promise you that, you know, seeds lose their lust mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. But if I am not mistaken, I believe that that's the case made 100% here in the United States of America. And I have everything in this bag from arugula, asparagus, every kind of bean down to watermelon. Wow. So every vegetable that you can think of from A to W, because um, actually there is zucchini in here, but it's under another name. So everything from A to Z, yes. I basically have it in this pack. OK, yep. so that's why the little the package was so small, because they all come in this package here. So today I'm just going to show you what I do, how I guess just get set up. Yeah. All right. I love it. I love all right. It. So let, let's just keep it simple. All right. So first of all, I'm, of course, I'm going to talk about the soil that I have for my seeds mm -hmm. and the containers that I'm going to be using for my seeds today. Yes. So for folks at home. If you are about to, you know, start your little indoor seeds that you are going to take outside or indoor seeds that are going to stay indoors, okay, this is for you. So this is what's happening here. I have two types of containers. This container obviously is um, not biodegradable. It's like a four by six. And why am I using this one? I'm going to put a whole bunch of onion seeds in here, like a whole bunch, like whatever falls in my hand, I'm going to sprinkle. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because onions, um, you can put a lot of onions in one container. You can even do a container bigger than this. OK, but I don't really need to. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put whatever I get in my hand. I'm not even going to count the seeds because onion seeds tend to be kind of small and I'm going to sprinkle them around. And then I'm going to cover them up. So as these onions starts to start to root, even if they're like 20 of them in this little container with this kind of um, almost four inch diameter opening, you okay. can pull the onions apart once they're strong enough as, as seedlings. And then you can plant the individual onion. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So even if I have like 20 little seedlings in here, yeah. I'm not worried about it crowding out. In fact, they need that space. Mm -hmm. They kind of do well close together. And then I'll just empty them when they're strong enough. And I, and I take them outside and then I'll just pull them gently apart. And then I'll plant them about, you know, it depends on the size of the, the mm -hmm. onion. These are just Spanish onions. Yes. So they can vary in size. So I'll plant them about you know, anywhere between three and six inches apart. Yes. Okay. And I'll do the same thing, six inches apart and six inches in terms of rows and back. It doesn't need a lot of space. And this one is like a peat moss kind of container. And yeah. why do I use this? Mm -hmm. Because there are some, there are some uh, plants that do not like to be disturbed. 
Okay. okay? Your roots don't yeah. like to be disturbed. Gotcha. And we have to remember that gardening is about life. Gardening is alive. Yeah. So these plants have roots and these roots are very, very sensitive mm -hmm. because the roots, if the roots are damaged or if the roots are overstressed in any way, mm -hmm. it will impact how the plant will grow. Gotcha. It will impact the health of the plant. It will impact if the plant grows at all. So let's take, for example, like um, like a squash. If I'm not mistaken, squash, they don't like to be manipulated too much. Okay. okay. And I believe carrots are the same way. And what I mean by that is if I were to plant squash in this container, mm -hmm. I would have to be really, 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 really careful when I take it out of the soil because the roots are sensitive. They don't like to be traumatized, for lack of a better word. Yeah. So when you use something like this, this is biodegradable. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I can grow, I can put one squash in this pot. Mm -hmm. And when it's ready, I'll just take the pot and stick it in the earth. Right. So right. I'm not disturbing the root at all because right. this is biodegradable. It's peat moss and whatever they use to hold it together. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cocoa right. core, whatever makes this up. And it'll just disintegrate into the earth. Mm -hmm. And so the root has not been disturbed. Mm -hmm. And so I choose. So I do this for plants that are sensitive, but I also just do this to cut down on waste. Because one of the things that I'm also concerned about or that I started to become more concerned about and more conscious about is how many things I have to put back into the, the trash. Right, right. Okay, sustainability. I'm, I'm starting to become more and more involved in that. Yes, so yes. like these, you throw away, mm -hmm. right? Or you can throw away. But believe it or not, I don't always throw these away, okay? Right. I will clean these really, really good at the end of the season. And I mean, good, like soapy water, yeah. uh, vinegar, just yeah. natural vinegar. Yeah. And I'll clean these out, get the dirt out, make sure there are no insects. And then I'll dry these and then I'll use them next season. Mm -hmm. So I cut down on my waste, but I don't throw them away as much anymore. Okay. But these are all brand new. I pulled out some brand new ones for you. And so that's the first thing we're going to do. Okay. We're going to fill these up with soil. All right. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to be good. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I never use gloves, especially when I'm indoors, but <laughs> I'm going to put on my purple gloves because purple and burnt orange are my colors. I love it. Perfect. So color. I'm going to yeah. put on some purple gardening gloves. Yeah. And I am going to take my pot. Yeah. And I am going to fill my pot up I with soil. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now, before I do that, Kevin, if it's all right, yes. I'm going to explain to you all the kind of soil that, that I use. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I believe I may have said this in the beginning, but if not, here we go. You have to make sure you have a soil that is for starting your, uh, uh, it's called the seed starting soil. Okay. And seed starting soil is different from regular soil. Okay. And the difference is you have to be careful with seeds. You don't want a whole lot of stuff in your um, seed starting blend. Stuff like what? Like fertilizers. Okay. Okay. Seeds need, they don't need a whole lot of fertilizer, first of all, to begin with, because okay. they're young. Gotcha. It's like, think about a baby. Yeah. yeah. Right. A baby has either the mom's um, breast milk right. or a certain kind of formula, right? Yeah. Yes. But you have to be careful with that formula because you can't take a baby and go, for, you can't give them Pedialyte right. or Pediasure, right. an right. infant, right. because it's too much stuff in Pediasure for an infant. There's certain nutrients that they need. There's yes. certain nutrients that um, seeds need. Okay. And so the blend that I have is actually by a company that I love so much and I'm so disappointed because they move, then it's going to be difficult for me to get them in bulk. Okay. But the company is Organic Mechanic. Um, it's because it's organic that I love them so much. And I would drive up to Pennsylvania. I, I showed you all pictures yeah. once of all the stuff I had in the back of my truck. Well, they have since moved and things have changed a bit, but they have an amazing seed starting blend. Oh, I love okay? it. And you can get this in stores across the country. I just don't know, uh, again, 
everybody's in a different place. Yeah. But if you put in organic mechanic mm -hmm. and you look for seed starting blend, hopefully you'll be able to find a nursery that may carry it. Yeah. And the reason why I like it, I'm just going to read this to you. It's 100, it's a 100% organic mix mm -hmm. that has the absolute perfect blend for starting seeds. Okay. It, it yeah. has cocoa core. It has pine bark, rice, hull. It has worm castings and um, other nutrients that are optimal for seed germination. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can go buy this. Now, you don't have to buy organic mechanic. There are other ones out there, but this is just my preference. Okay. Wow. Um, because I don't want anything that has any more chemicals in it. And most of the stuff on the market, I have to be honest with you, regardless of the name, I don't want to call any names out. It's not always 100%. Got you. Okay. Yeah, got and you. certainly if it doesn't say organic, it's not, but this is just <laughs> my choice. Yes. All right. Yes. So because we, I want my seeds to have the best start. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. So that's the soil that I'm actually using. So I'm actually going to fill up my plant uh, with soil. I so I'm going to sit this on my lap. Okay. So all I'm doing is just taking well, actually, I'm going to use this for the for the uh, onions. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to take this plant, see all the good, great aeration. You want to have a lot of, you want your holes to be great yes. because you want your water to flow. You yes. never want your plants, especially when you're starting seeds. You don't want them to sit in water. You want that water to flow and you want to have good aeration so right. that the, the roots can also grow nice and strong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's real simple. I got my little handle here. Filling it up. I love it. All right. Kevin said real time. So real time is what we got here. Hey, All Doc, right. I, I wanted to mention to him, try this at home. You know, we say sometimes don't try this at home. Try this at home. Definitely. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> Definitely try this at home. Try okay. <laughs> and there is no formula. You know, like, well, how much should I put in? Fill it up. Yeah. Just fill it up to the top. Okay. Because this is what's going to happen. Once you fill it up, it's very lightweight. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. so you also want room in your soil so that your roots can grow down nice and strong. Yeah. So I don't pack. Okay, I lightly press mm -hmm. because this is dry. And if you notice between this one right here, there's a line right at the bottom of my finger. Can you see yeah. that, Kevin? Yeah, I can see that. All right, yeah. that's kind of the height okay. that you technically want your soil to be. Gotcha. And why is that? It's just simple so that the water can go down. You don't want the soil all the way at the top and the water runs yeah, off, exactly. right? So right. you don't have to pack it, right. especially because we're starting seeds. Mm -hmm. So it's really a personal choice. Yes. And because I want mine to have as much room as possible, and these are big because I'm putting a lot of onions in here, all right? Yeah. So I just kind of pat it lightly, and I'm ready. So that's for that. All right, so I'm going to do a couple right now. So this is easier to just do it this way. So yes. you see, there's no science to this. It's not rocket science. Mm -mm. All right. Easy so enough. here is also one of my peat moss. Mm -hmm. And again, this one's already filled up for time's sake. And as you can see, I left about maybe a half an inch to an inch yeah, at the top. Mm -hmm. This is very lightweight. And all I do is just press it gently. Now, mm -hmm. please note, there is no science to this part, all right? <laughs> so this is very much a personal thing. Right. Just remember, do not pack it. Some right. people with their soil first, it's a personal preference. Right. Right? Right. I don't. I do save all of that to the end, mm -hmm. all right? So now this is pressed down. So now I'm ready to add seeds to this one, all right? And so we'll do these two for now, yeah. all right? So I'm going to sit this down. So I'm, I'm all ready. So what's the next thing that I need to do? Well, I'm going to open up my seeds. I do have to take my gloves off for this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, because these seeds are so tiny. Yes. So I'm going to do my onions. And I think I explained, I'm going to do Spanish onions. Mm -hmm. Yellow, yellow Spanish onions. Okay, folks, here we go. And I'll try to show you the onions. Of course, my paper doesn't want to open today. That's all Let right. Let me get a pen and uh, take care of that. 
real quick. Hey guys, if you hey, if you're just joining us, this is Ask the Nurse, Dr. Proctor. We're talking about home gardening tips, guys. This is We're live and home gardening. Exciting. This is so a, I'm gonna have to tear this because it doesn't want to work well for me. That's okay. Take and so I only used uh, this the seed blend that I have. Yeah. I used it for the first time last year. Yes. And it would make better sense if you could see this, but my hand and the seed may not blend well. So I am going to put my glove on All right. so that I can show you what the seeds look like. Yes. And you'll understand why you can plant a whole lot of onion seeds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Can you see this? Yeah, I can see those, Doc. I see them. I like it. And you know, okay, great. They're you know what they look like? They look like little large grains of um ground up pepper, gotcha. like coarse oh, pepper. Okay. That's yeah. exactly what they look like. Gotcha. And I cannot gotcha. tell you how many I just poured in my hand. All right. But it's probably 30 or 40. But you don't need to count them. You don't need to worry about no, it. I'm, no, I'm not interested in counting them. Right. I'm not interested in counting them at all. So all I'm gonna do yeah. is take these and just sprinkle them. Again, <laughs> no method to the madness, folks. <laughs> I love it. I'm just sprinkling this on my on my soil. Yes. I'm not using all of these. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm just going to sit the rest of these here in a cup. Okay. Gotcha. So I'm I'm not sure, but I'm hoping. Can you see some little brown black granules here? No, no, I can't. Not really, because I know the image. Okay, all we right. In it's, it, it's not important. No, all right, it's not important. Yeah. So now I just sprinkled a whole bunch mm -hmm. of my um, onion seeds, my Spanish onion seeds, in this four by six container. Yes. So now what? But they're exposed. Right. Oh, yeah, they right. are exposed. So what am I going to do now? Right. Is I'm going to put some soil on top of it. Ah, okay? that's Because I'm reason. going to cover my seeds. Very good. All right. Like but you don't want to cover your seeds really thick because you want the seed, the seedling to be able to come through. Mm -hmm. So I have some soil right here. I'm just going to take some soil okay. and literally just sprinkle it on top. I love it, Doc. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. This is yeah. all I'm doing is I'm just sprinkling it on top. Yep. Yeah. I'm making sure. Mm -hmm. that I don't see any of the seeds. Yes. And this is literally how I do this. This uh -huh. is truly Victoria's yeah. <clears throat> real time starting her stuff. I love All right. It. And so this one is technically ready to go. Yes. So what's the next step? I need to water it. Okay. But okay. well, we're going to hold on to water for a second. Okay? okay. Okay. All right. So the other one that I'd like to show you is um, now I'm going to do um, the, the giant noble spinach. Okay. And Kevin, if there's one thing I probably should have done was made sure I had opened all these before because they're oh, that's so okay. that's, tiny. That's exactly what would happen to us starting too. So we got to know how so to open. tiny. Yeah. But I'm very careful. Good. I like to seal them again. This is only yeah. the second year I've used this packet. Right. So I'm really excited because I do think I'll have many years because they give you a lot. Right. They give you a exactly. lot here. Absolutely. Yeah. This definitely won't um, show well That's all right. um, in my hand, but I'm gonna do my best. <clears throat> yep. I can see. I can see something. Can you see those seeds? I can see them. They're beautiful. And they're, they're yeah. tiny, tiny seeds. Yeah. So, how do you get a seed from spinach? <laughs> well, it's pretty simple. If you leave just about any like a green or onion or mm -hmm. some plant what they call bolt. Yes. Like if it starts to flower, let it flower because from that flower is where the seeds are. Ah, so good. when a spinach, you know, you got a beautiful head of spinach or a bit yeah. of beautiful head of lettuce, but if you're uh -huh. gonna let it grow, you'll notice that it'll bolt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like it'll just start mm -hmm. to grow and you'll see a flower. Those are where the seeds come from. Ah, so yes, yeah, spinach, you can actually get your own seeds off of your plant that you <laughs> love in the garden. I have a very dear friend of mine who never, ever buy seeds. Right. They never buy them. Right, right. She and her husband, every year they grow some, they put some out. They yep. dry them, especially tomatoes. 
She's like, oh, you, yeah. she's from Bangladesh. Yeah. So yeah. they're very, it's a different culture, right? right? right. But I love it very because they never spend money on seeds. Very and efficient. it is in some cases, <clears throat> it depends on what your, your goal is. Okay. If you don't want to be bothered with that process, right. but for some people it's very natural. And some of us don't know Actually, even know that, Doc. Some of us go What's out that? and buy. Some of us don't even know that they can have the seed from the things they're planting and growing. We didn't know. Well, you know what? Don't Depending on how long we stay together, Kevin, yeah. if we're together through the whole season, yeah. I can actually show you how I did that with my cucumbers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we got okay, you really down. can't. It's not difficult. What you oh. do is just leave the you leave the fruit. Well, yeah. in my case, I well, tomatoes are fruit. Yeah. You leave the tomato or the cucumber mm. on the tree, yeah. on the plant. You yeah. don't pick it. Right. That You just let it grow to the end because right. the color is going to change. You right. just leave it. That's the one you're going to take your seeds from. I love it. Okay. So we may have an opportunity to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Now you're like, okay, here you go. What are you going to do here? I took one of those seeds, just one. And I'm going to put this one seed right in the middle yeah, Doc. Of this container. I love it. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. This container is bigger than I would net, net, uh, normally put this seed in. Uh -huh. But it, it was just better. I have some that are smaller than this. Yes. Okay? Yes. yes. I don't need it to be this big. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why we should have a smaller pot? No. It's because I grow so much indoors. Right. Yeah. I just have to be mindful of my space. Right. Right. Okay? So I usually use smaller pots for certain um, for certain seeds mm -hmm. and bigger pots. I even use bigger pots than this four by six for certain seeds as well. Mm -hmm. It's just because of my space. All but right. I'm going to take this one little seed and right. just place it right in the middle right. of this pot. Now, I'm using this biodegradable one. Right. OK. And that's it. Yeah. What's the next step, Kevin? Now, Doc, hope before you go to the next step, I, would, I noticed that you didn't have a lot of seeds for that one. So you didn't sprinkle a bunch of seeds for that. You only had one. For the, That's I, right. That's correct. That's right. Re, could, I, could I put more in there or do you recommend just one per pot? Well, you can. But again, I don't like to separate certain plants. Okay. Drop right. my glove. I didn't, I don't like, and, and the, the, see the roots on these are different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. You, some um, plants need the space. Right. So right. you don't want to put a whole bunch of seeds in there. Now, if I had a, a much bigger pot, let's right. say I had an eight inch pot. Gotcha. Eight right. inches in diameter. Right. Yeah. I would put one on one side of the pot, not too gotcha. close to the edge, gotcha. maybe two inches from the edge. Okay. And then I could put the other one two inches from the other edge right. and then let it grow. And so when it's time to take them out of that pot. Yes. Now, we're not talking about a peat moss pot. When it's time to right. take it out of a regular pot, right. then I would right. split the soil. Gotcha. Okay? But I would only do that with plants that are not as sensitive, where the roots gotcha. are okay. Now, I'm gentle no matter what. Right. But I would only do that with certain plants if I kind of just, you know, if I want to save the space, because I do that as well. Right. All right? I love it, Doc. So our next step, Doc, would be to layer... A little sprinkle layer. Do, 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 that's do, right. That's do. right. Put a little blanket on the babies. <laughs> I want to be honest, and I keep putting these gloves on. I guess I should, you know, implement good behavior. But I mean, that's this right. stuff is in my home. It's not outside. Right, right. But I have to be honest, folks. You'll see me outside. I always start out with gloves, yeah. and then I end up with no gloves. <laughs> but let me tell you right now, wear your gloves. Yeah. And Every time I take my gloves off when I go out, I love to feel the earth yeah, and the yeah. dirt in my That's hand. what I was going to mention. I that. love to yeah. feel it. Yeah, yeah. But it's you have to be careful. Every time I take my gloves off, I always end up getting some kind of nasty cut from okay. something. Gotcha. My fence, gotcha. something happens. Gotcha. So and every time I do it, I'm like, you keep saying you're going to keep your gloves on the entire time. Gotcha. Every year I do it. Yeah. I'll try again this year, but it probably won't work. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, wear your gloves just to protect your hands. Yeah, and yeah, there's also yeah. another reason that gloves are important, indoors or outdoors. And if it's okay, I'll, I'll share this now. Yes. Yes, it's dirt. Yes, it's mother nature. But there's still critters. And you have to be careful if you have any open cuts mm. or anything like that. You don't want to get anything in your cut that might cause you to have some kind of infection. Yeah. I don't know the state of your soil. 
I don't know the state of the soil in your home, right? But the state of the soil that you buy. Yes. So you do have to be careful. And that's why you do wear gloves. One is to keep your hands from getting so dirty, but it's also to protect your hands and your nails. Because if you get the dirt under there, you know, it, it, there, there are germs and there are microscopic little organisms that you have to be careful about. OK, that's why you have gardening gloves out there. All mm -hmm. right. So, yes, you should wear them. No, I don't all the time, but I'm also meticulous as a nurse. I scrub my hands really well anyway, because it's like almost like an obsession after being in a, nur a nurse for so long. I wash my hands really well, and then I scrub my fingernails yeah, yeah. whenever I'm done at the end of the day. And that's actually the truth. That's what I do. But anyway, get some gloves. So yeah. it's time to take soil. And I put it right on top. I love it. And this spinach is right in the middle. Yep. And um, and Doc, while you, well, you're talking, I, I'm, I'm thinking this is almost like an art class, almost <laughs> for gardening. <laughs> hey, it. this would be a perfect uh, class yeah. to have. Yeah. I actually am going to do a gardening class with cacti. Yeah. Yeah. Have people come and create terrariums. Yeah. 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 And um, they can take them home. Those are so All beautiful. Right, so, yeah. so, so this is it. I'm done. Yeah. It's just that simple. Well, yeah. is it really that simple? No, of course. There's <laughs> something that needs to go in here, Kevin. Oh, we ain't really finished yet. You're not finished. Yeah, we're, 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 we're not finished, but, it, but, but your cousin forgot one simple step, but it's pretty easy to fix. Absolutely. As you mentioned earlier. And what is that step? The step I, is. That was one of your seasons. I got to remember what I just did. Oh, the label. Oh, good point. The label, right? Yeah. So you, I have tons of labels. I believe I showed you all my labels, yeah. but let's act like I didn't. Here's right. a label, okay? You yeah. can stick this label right in here. Yeah. You can stick, it's a stick. You can stick this label right in here. Of course, I'm going to put the name on it, right. but I don't have to do that. Why right. is that? Right. So this is what I'm going to actually do. What I'm going to do is just take a marker. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, Doc. Again, because I don't remember, I'm not going to, I can't use this again, right? Uh, right. So I'm just going to take a marker and I'm going to put giant. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can write right on the pot. I love it. This is called a giant. Oh, it's not coming out too well. Sorry about that, folks. That's all right. I can do it. Let me do it on this other one. My, um, mm hmm. My marker isn't working as well as I want it to work. So let's that's, just see. That's a good point. Work. So guys, one of the things you may need is a, a wide, uh, what do you call it, wide tip Sharpie. Well, what I would suggest is what I have. And I just can't, I, I again, I, yeah. I forgot a couple of things, people. But yeah. this is real time. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, this is my first time doing this. And I just appreciate being here and, and oh, you yeah. all this just working great. with this me. This is great, guys. This so you great. learn from my mistakes. Remember I said in the beginning, I've gotten better because I've made so many mistakes in the process. All of us do. <laughs> Everything is about a lesson, right? You learn. So it's simple. It yep. doesn't really matter. Yep. You want a permanent marker. Yep. I have a permanent waterproof Sharpie. There you go. Why waterproof? Well, you can answer that question, right? Rain. I don't know that, yeah. Why? Because I did this my first year. Right. I didn't use a waterproof uh, Sharpie. <laughs> I actually used an ink pen, a regular pen. Right. And before halfway through the season, right. I had no clue right. out of my eight or 12 tomato plants, which one was which. I couldn't remember all the names right. because they all washed off. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, onion. I love it, Doc. This is great. So I can just, I'm just going to write onion on here. Mm -hmm. all right, okay. It's not coming out as well as I'd like it to be, folks. But just put the name onion mm -hmm. and then I put the date and I'll actually do this because I have to make sure I remember. Yes. So yes. you can't see this because this is not a marker, it's like a highlighter, mm -hmm. but I have onion written here and I'm going to put the date. Yes. And today is what? Three? It is 313 2023. 313 20. Three, and this is onion. Yeah. And I'm going to put Spanish. And hopefully you can see this now. Can you see this? 
Kevin? Oh, yes, I can. Yes, yes. So Spanish. Now, the yeah. other thing that I'll do, so it's on the container. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that I'll do with this is I'll do the same thing on its stick. I'll put it here. Spanish. Onion. And then I put the date. Yes. So this says Spanish onion okay. here. Got it. Yes. Oh, beautiful. And then I'll stick it in here. Mm -hmm. So why is that important? I did it twice. Because see, I'm going to take it out of this container. Gotcha. Right? When it's ready, I'm going to lay it on the soil outside. Gotcha. And then I'm going to have to separate all of these onions. Okay, gotcha. And so I already know where my onions are going to go. It's going to go on one row. Right. This particular Spanish onion, I'm going to do about seven different types of onions, oh, okay. but I always put my onions in one row. Yeah. And so what I'll do then is after that, after I place them, I'll take my stick mm -hmm. and put it at the beginning of that row. So I remember what onion it is. So I'll know that I did on, yeah. on March yeah. 13, my Spanish onion is in this row. So oh. I have a stick at the beginning and I'll have a stick at the end. Oh, that's great, Doc. And I like I know that. that. Everything in that row is just my onion. Good planning, okay? Doc. That's good planning, folks. That's good planning for your uh, outside needs there later on. That's now, great. because I really love onions, but also the reason why I do so many onions, yeah. it's because onions are a natural deterrent for some pests ah, and for some bugs. Very good. That's also, to be honest with you, that's one of the main reasons why I actually use onions love a it. lot of them yeah, i love I, to eat them but yeah. they're really really great to plant around everything and all natural too, they, they, they keep the bugs away yeah, all natural and I, again <laughs> if you can do as much as possible to decrease using any chemicals mm -hmm. as right. a deterrent because right. you want to be careful because not every bug is bad yeah right exactly. you yeah. have some beneficial yeah. little critters out there yeah um that we need like you know ladybugs and absolutely. and and there's certain creepy crawlers that are wonderful yeah um, i love it. um uh, praying mantises i've thought about buying those they're yeah. excellent for yeah. eating the bad bugs yeah excellent but they're also kind of expensive to buy yeah, exactly. so just little things that you can do yes all right and then you just plant onions everywhere yeah. because they're great bug deterrents oh i love it hey doc also too i want to mention since this is a family show it also helps keep, uh, you know, for the children, if you got your children involved, that's going to help protect them too, guys, and keep it all natural. So your goal is to reduce or have zero uh, chemicals out there uh, as you're playing in the dirt again with your wonderful planting. So I wanted to mention- Oh, absolutely, absolutely, as they say. They don't want, to, yeah, don't want the children to get involved in those chemicals uh, when they don't need to. So- uh, Oh, absolutely, and not just the kids too. I mean, think yeah. about the pets. Yeah, yeah, your exactly. Pets. Yep, pets too. You yep. have to be careful of the pets as well. Yep. Um, I have a friend who brings my god doggy. I have a guy, I have a golden doodle god doggy. I'm a god yeah. mommy golden doodle. And he <laughs> loves, he comes in my yard and he wreaks havoc, but I don't allow him to come until right. like in my yard off his chain yes. until towards the end of the season because he just runs all over my stuff. Yeah, exactly. By the time I let him off the leash. It, my stuff is going down and I'm ready to pull it in a few weeks. So it doesn't really matter. Right. All right. So are we okay with that? Yes. All right. So folks, what we did is we just took our container and right now I just did two. I, I, I have the, um, I have the Swiss chard that I'm going to use as well, but there's no, no difference here. It's, it's mm -hmm. all the same. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. have to remember to label, yeah. get yourself a permanent waterproof marker black mm -hmm. sharpie whatever the color you or whatever color you want that you can see mm -hmm. and make sure you put it on your container yeah. and make sure you put it on your stick yes okay yeah. your 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 label stick yeah so that you don't forget right what you planted okay that. so now everything is in my onions are in my one seed for my spinach yeah. so are you only going to plant one spinach no right i'm actually going to put I'm going to put this spinach, I'm going to put four more spinach uh, pots together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's it. Is that all you're going to do for the whole season? No. And about three weeks, maybe two, three weeks later, I'm going to start some more spinach. Right. Because right. it is my goal this season to do what they call succession okay. gardening. 
So okay. I'm going to try to keep stuff going. Yes, yes. All right. So by the time I pick this spinach, then the other spinach will go in the earth and it give me, and I'll have another head of spinach that I can mm -hmm. get later on. So in a couple of more weeks, I'm going to do some more spinach. And then by the time this first batch is ready to pull and eat, then I'll stick another one in its place. I love it, Doc. And okay. that's really important if you want to try to keep things going, okay? Right, but right. you have to remember something with spinach and greens and lettuces. They do not thrive in heat, okay? okay? So why is that important? Wow. Make sure whatever you plant, like a like a, say spinach or lettuce, lettuce in particular, try to plant lettuce either behind something or in front of something. Okay. So if you're, what is sun rises in the east and right. sets in the west. Yeah. So wherever your sun is the most, if wherever your sun is the most, the strongest, right. make sure that you have some shade protecting like your lettuce. Gotcha. Lettuce does not do well in heat, yeah, but absolutely. let but when you grow plants like tomatoes and cucumbers that grow and they thrive on the heat and they get really big, wow. that's the perfect place yeah. to put um, yeah, no. a lettuce um, seedling in between your tomato plants or in between your cucumber yeah. because your cucumber and your tomatoes are big and leafy yeah. and they actually provide shade for those more heat sensitive plants. So my suggestion is to your audience is just to make sure, decide what you're gonna plant yeah. and see if it's heat sensitive. Yeah. And if you're planting another, if you're planting tomatoes or cucumbers, mm -hmm. which thrive in the heat, mm -hmm. thrive, they love the sun, they love the heat, then plant your heat sensitive yeah. in between, just make sure you have enough space. That's good, Doc. Okay? Yeah, that's not perfect, I love it. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna just act like everything is is great here, and I will truly have to just fix this at the end. So now that that's done. So really, then what's next? I need to water this plant. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. I have to water this plant. So I have this set up in a container that allows the water to drain out. Right. Okay. So because I'm also having, I, for the sake of the view folks, right, right. I have to elevate. Right. So the one where my pots are in, I would literally turn this thing that's under it over to catch the water. Right. Okay. So I'm going to have to be careful right. because right now it's, it's my prop. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So this is just room temperature water. Right. Many people don't really also that when you plant indoors this is not about just gardening this is not for gardening um, for vegetables this is for planting as you can see these are my plants behind me yes they're beautiful and, yeah. and they do incredibly well because i take extremely good care of my plants i have thousands actually in my house yes <clears throat> so i have gallons and gallons of water all over the house and so once i plant i fill up my gallon take and i, I don't use it again if I have to, um, at least for 24 hours. Why? Because you want to get that sediment and you want like the calcium and all that right. stuff that's harsh yeah. to kind of settle down or dissipate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's also good if you want to use distilled water, but right. there's no way I'm going to do all that. Okay. Right. Again, right. you don't right. want to increase any costs unnecessarily. Right. Right. So literally it's just this folks. Now, yeah. do I have to worry about the water going all the way down? Do I really want to soak this thing? I really do, mm -hmm. but I can't because of the way it's set up. So yeah. I'm literally just pouring water right, right. that has already been sitting. Right. And because I haven't packed it, again, this is not anything you need to really see, but right. I can try to show you. Absolutely. The uh, water is already uh, draining out Right. here. Yep. Why is it draining out? Because I haven't packed it. I want aeration. Right. I want right. it to be good. Yep. All right. Yep. Got that. So doc. that's it. Yep. I like that, Doc. So this is great. Now, do you have to pack any more? I don't. Right. But this is what I'm going to do the same thing to my onions, folks. All right. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, guys. Beautiful. This is gardening 101, guys. Beautiful, Doc. So what I will do 
um, at the end is I have to make sure I want my soil saturated. All right, right. Okay. Because my soil is not packed, right. it will dry out quickly. All right, right. Okay. Because if you pack the soil, then it's going to hold on to the water. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't want this stuff to hold on to the water at all. Right. I want it to, I want to keep, I want to make sure there's enough air space in yes. the soil so that the, the, the plant can grow. Yes. Yes. All right. So now, um, there's always the possibility that a little critter could be somewhere, even in the house. Yeah. Now, um, Kevin, in my attempt to show you and my uh, and the audience a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago when we were together, my setup in the basement. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't go well because I wasn't that great with maneuvering the camera. Oh, you did a good if, job. If, yeah. if, if you know, if you remember, I showed you my greenhouse. Yes. And I showed you like my collard tree yes. plants that I'm growing. Yes. And I believe I showed my um, grow tent. Yes. Okay. Outside. I had a big black grow tent. Outside, yeah. right? mm -hmm. You all will see that next time, the grow tent, because this is where this is going. But mm -hmm. let me just back up. That greenhouse that's downstairs <clears throat> has, um, do you see these yellow things behind me? Yes. These yellow things catch fungal gnats. Okay. Okay. Fungal gnats are just annoying. Okay. Annoying. Absolutely annoying. And this is how I got into gardening. If you all remember, I think I shared this. I had an infestation oh. that was insane. But see, I didn't know anything. I didn't know what I was doing. And so when I got all these bugs that I didn't know what they were, I right. totally freaked out because it was in my home. Right, right. I noticed that these little bugs were flying around one day and the right. next day it was a gazillion. Wow. So I'm trying to figure out what happened. Yeah. So I started to do research. I started yeah. calling Valley View Farm in Maryland, which is an a, a, a amazing nursery that can answer all your questions. Wow. And I told them what was going on. I said, oh, you have fungal gnats. Okay. You can use this, this, or this. Gotcha. So yellow stickies are what I have in my window. Yeah, yeah. You can get these on Amazon. You can get right. like a pack of hundred. They're right. literally they're sticky. You pull the you pull the protective covering off, uh -huh. put it on a twist tie, and just hang it. Right. And what happens is they're attracted to that light of the color. Okay. I put that thing up. Right. I went to bed. Yeah. I came back the next day. That yellow was almost black. Oh wow! That's how wow. many were in. The, yeah. Wow. It was it was horrible. Wow. It was, I mean, now it doesn't bother me at all, but this was a newbie. I was really a newbie. I understand. Okay. Yeah. And so I did treat systemically mm -hmm. because I didn't know, again, I was learning. So I got right. this, this, this treatment that was excellent. Yes. Yes. And so I treated every plant because I told myself, I'm going to give myself two months to get the problem under control. Mm -hmm. If I couldn't get it under control, I was going to throw everything away. It was just so gross to me. Yeah, right. I didn't have half as many plants either. Yeah. It was in the beginning. Anyway, long story short, um, this stuff works great. The systemic yeah. treatment is awesome, but the systemic treatment is more of a chemical. Okay. So I've gotten better. So I use, the, I use these fungal net uh, traps in my grow, in my, um, greenhouse in the basement because I do have some fungal gnats because I brought some plants right. in from yeah. outside. Right, right. And the problem is they can like multiply like crazy. Wow. So there's always a chance that I, I'm, I'm not going to see them and one right. can sneak into my grow tent right, right. when I open it. Right. Just one. Right. And by tomorrow, it'll be a gazillion. Wow. So I want to protect these plants, okay? Because yeah. this is going to go from two. By the time you all see me in a couple of, maybe a month from now, yeah. I'll probably have 30 or 40 containers in a grow room. Yeah. There's going to be a fungal gnat. Yeah. Because fungal gnats are also attracted to moisture. Oh, That's right. another reason why you don't want your soil gotcha. soaking wet inside. Gotcha. That's for house plants, vegetable plants, seed starting, whatever. That's another thing about gardening that I'd like for you to share with you all, okay? You never want your soil to be sopping wet. Right. A, you're risking disease, fungal um, disease yeah. growing, killing the plant, right. but it's the perfect haven for fungal gnats, which will drive you crazy. That makes sense, Doc. All right? Yeah. So 
what else can I do to help protect my seeds? Kevin, I like to use diatomaceous earth. Okay. And I believe I shared um, this with you. What is diatomaceous earth and why do you use it? This is food grade diatomaceous earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what this is, it's made from microscopic fossil shards and shreds. Okay. Okay. And what, so this is like this powder to fungal gnats is like them eating a, a razor blade. Oh. The moment they come in contact with this, it starts ripping them apart. Literally. Wow. That's, it, it's like, it's like them. It's like, yeah. Kryptonite. Stepping on razor blades. It's yeah, just kryptonite. cutting them up. Yeah, that's their kryptonite right there, buddy. Yeah. Okay. So um, so yeah, so I just use yeah. this. Well, when did I when did I start this? Again, learning to do things more naturally. Yeah. Now I would be very careful with this because it's very powdery, but the, you know, I'm in the in yeah. the house. I'm not worried right. about inhaling this. Right. Um, but if you're outside, it blows. So I would yeah. definitely have a cover and yeah. you'll see me do this outside. Yeah. So all I'm doing. Yeah, I like it, Doc. This little. Can you see it? Yep, sure can. Beautiful. It's a light color. And so, if anything, yeah. and it's not going to hurt my seed right. at all. It's not going to do anything to my plant. If anything, right. I'm protecting it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That's and I don't have to use a heavy layer right, at all. Right. Right. But That's the right. other thing that I also do is I use. I love to use cinnamon. Mm-hmm. Okay, and yeah, cinnamon. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, actually yeah. put cinnamon on top. Yeah, why? Wow. That's ground, that's that's ground cinnamon. cinnamon, like ground cinnamon. This is ground up cinnamon, and I, you know, I, I got it from Trader Joe's. Unfortunately, I'm not endorsing them. Um, yeah, yeah, Dollar Tree got it. <laughs> it's, it's cheap. <laughs> that's why I get it from Dollar, Trader Joe's. Okay? Joe, yeah. And all I do with this, same thing. Yeah. That's great, Doc. I don't know if you can see this coming out because of the color. Yeah, I can see it. Yep, I can see it, Doc, a little bit. Yep. So yep. now this has gotten a little brown. Oh, I love it. What a beautiful color. This is Plus art it class. smells delicious. Yeah, this okay, is art class, really smells guys. good. This is art class for gardening. <laughs> yeah, so, and here you have it. So guess what? This plant's ready. My oh, onions cool. are ready. That's done. And I'll, again, I'll do this. Does it matter if you put the, the cinnamon right. before the diatomaceous earth? Of course um, not. Not. It doesn't matter. So okay. I just take this and I'm sprinkling it on my one little um, okay. spinach. I love Same it. Same thing with the with the um, yeah. cinnamon. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yep. And that's that. Love it. That's beautiful. And this is it. So yeah. truthfully, what I'm gonna do is I gotta go and I gotta stick labels in there. I'll put my little sticks in there. Yeah. And um. So I showed you all, and you'll see this next time. I'll show you these plants. Hopefully they'll, would have sprouted in two weeks. Yeah. And um, so I have, I have a huge four by eight grow, um, grow tent. Okay. But I also have a small one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put the, you're going to see more than this but next time because I have to finish up. Right. I have several plants, several yeah. seeds that I'm going to plant today. Yeah. But anyway, I'll put them in my small grow tent because I want the light to be like right here. Right, right. And so I'll be able to show you all this next uh, next time. Yes. Now, if you notice, I want the I want my light source to be like six inches from this plant. Okay. Potential plant. It's almost what because I want to give as much heat and yeah. as much warmth right. to that seed, right. so it can germinate. Right. Right. So I have a small grow tent that has a grow light. That that's not too powerful and won't right. burn right. up that right. seedling. Right, right, Doc. Okay. Makes sense. This is not for for the beginner. Right. Okay. You don't have to do this. It's because I've gotten more involved. But you right. do want to get a grow light. Mm -hmm. And you can get grow. You can go to Amazon and get these little clip-on grow lights. Right. And um, Kevin, if it's okay, once we get through this, I'll just tip the camera. And yeah. I'll show you the grow lights that are literally right behind me. All right. Yeah. Um, because I keep grow lights on all my plants in the house. I have them on timers. Yeah. Okay. Because 
there's a window behind me and it, it, it's just a gloomy day, but a lot of these plants need more light than what's right. even coming right. into my window. Right. So right. I have them set on timers and I have um, plant lights on these plants. So I'll, I'll show you the different types that I have here. I love it. Um, so you will have to put your your plant, your, your seed yeah. under a light. Yeah. Okay, so if you're not ready do not do this unless you have a light source and are, are we talking a regular light from the house no right you need some kind of led plant right. grow light right and you can get a regular bulb right you can get a regular plant bulb Be direct a regular bulb mm -hmm. but it's a plant bulb an led right. plant bulb you can put right. it it looks like a regular light bulb right. and then you can put that right over top of it or right. you can get one of these special uh -huh. um uh grow lights right. okay right. the most important thing you got to remember is you got to put some light on this sort um oh, you got to put some light on your your seed I so that it. that heat will allow it to start to grow i love it all right so it. the grow tent that i have downstairs a small one i can put that light really right. i can it's on cables right. i will lower it right to about six inches all right and then i will keep that on the plant for 24 hours in the moment that I see that my plant has broken through, right. I will raise it about 12 inches oh. and then I'll put it on a timer for like 18, six, oh, no. 18 hours on six hours off. Gotcha. Why? Why is that important? Because just like humans, right? We're living. This is living. It needs to rest. Right. When do you grow best during rest, right? Yep, exactly. Babies, right. you want them to take a nap because That's it's right. restorative That's right. That's and right. you grow. When we, yeah. we rest so we can be restored and grow, plants do their best yeah. at night, yeah. not at night, in the downstage, not when they're active. It's like they grow at night. That's when they're growing. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to deprive them of that. Wow. All right. It's once the seed breaks through, some people keep 24 hours for a very, you know, um, even once it breaks through, they can keep it at 24 hours until it gets to a certain length. Do your homework and read. That will be based on the seed that you choose to start. Yeah. Because there are some seeds that I can keep going for 24 hours until it gets, gets established pretty well. And, and what does that mean? You'll see a seedling, and then all of a sudden you're gonna see a little leaf pop out, like a cucumber. Yeah. A cucumber, once it pops through, yeah. It'll start to shoot out their first two little leaves. Wow, that's powerful. Once my cucumber gets to two little leaves, I do not do 24 hours. Okay. I'll do like an 18, a 16, eight, or I'll do something. Um, uh, uh -huh. I'll actually have it under the darkness for a little longer. Oh, I love it, Doc. This is beautiful. Okay. And okay. so then what's the next step after this? keep your eye on it it's going to dry out quickly so you got to keep it um you got to keep it watered mm -hmm. moist mm -hmm. not saturated right. and that's why you want the water to be able to come through you want your soil don't let it dry out you right. will kill your seed right now that the seed is open and in here it does need moisture but please make sure it's not soaking wet yeah right okay that's and that's the most important thing. That I, I'd like to also share one other thing, if I may. Absolutely. Once your seed starts to sprout, and um, Kevin, would you do me a teeny favor and just make a little note for me here? I okay. kind of got a lot of spread here. Just yeah. make a little note. I'm going to tell you all about bottom, uh, bottom watering your plant in two weeks. Okay. okay. One... Thing that's great to do especially once the um the seed starts to germinate again the root is going to continue to go down you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about that for a minute yes but another way to decrease bugs is to water from the bottom up okay. and we'll talk about that a little late we'll talk about that yes. in a couple Thank of weeks so much. That's good, the right. reason why it's in a couple of weeks because obviously we don't have any roots right 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 so I don't need to keep this soil saturated. Right. I just dropped that teeny seed into this mammoth, mammoth to the seed container. Right. So I'm just going to make sure I keep the soil at the ideal kind of moisture. What's ideal? Unfortunately, folks, it's just one of those things that I've just learned. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and you will too, just pay attention. You don't want your soil dried out. You don't want to pick it up. And it's like it was when you started. Yeah. You want it to have a little weight to it. And that just shows that there's enough moisture in there, okay? Because plus, if you use one of these biodegradable peat core, mm -hmm. um, peat, moss, cocoa core containers, right. this will start to break down if it stays wet all the time. Right, right, exactly. And you also might get the, um, you might get that green, um, like algae on right, it. Right, so you right. really have to be careful. You yeah. do not want your That's plant right. to sit and be saturated. And right. this might decide, it might start to break down if it stays right. wet all the time. Absolutely, exactly. You, have a, you don't want to make a mess, folks, in the house, for sure. You don't want to do that. No, 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 no you don't. As much as possible. I love it. I love it. Hey, but, but, take a no, commercial break real quick. Hey, guys, sure. just joining us. This is Ask the Nurse, Dr. Proctor. Guys, we've been talking about gardening tips 101 today, ladies and gentlemen. My awesome cousin, she is a doctor of nursing practitioner, uh, practice, uh, yeah, pra yeah, practice, and, and uh, also probably one of the best part is she's a holistic health and wellness professional for over 30 years, guys, and that's uh, I'm so excited about because our goal, guys, is to educate, train, and give you some excitement about growing your own food, guys. Come on, guys, we got to do this, guys. It's going to save you time, money, going to give you education, give you training. How about this? It's going to also give you some excitement too, guys, and maybe even a stress reliever for some of y'all out there who love to play in the dirt a little bit more each and every day. But Doc has been giving us some great tips today. We've been talking about planting onions, Spanish onions specifically, and then spinach uh, and with as well today. And Doc, that was powerful because it, it was a step-by-step -step process. And most of us can remember that, but also they can go back and listen to this over and over again and follow that step-by-step -step process, Doc. This is powerful. Thank you so much. What a great session today on this area of gardening. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, you're welcome. And, and it is, it, it's, it's, it's just truly yeah. how I do this. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say I'm an, I'm an expert. Soon I will be yeah, um, as I continue in That's my right. master gardening program. You're way ahead of me. I know that. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited about that. I, I am loving what I'm learning in my master gardening program. Yeah. And um, it's really important to do this stuff, Kevin, as I shared, okay. you, you have to keep me on point with time because I, I literally don't look at the clock or anything. Yeah, no problem. But, yeah, that's up to me. Yes, um, up to us. we're good to go. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you, we're going to take a couple more minutes and we'll give you some final thoughts. But guys, we are excited about gardening. We want well, to thank you for that as well. The reason why I'm saying this is because, um, you know, food insecurity is real. Yes, it is. And um and, and we and got enough important. land to handle it. We got enough land to handle it, guys. Come on now. Well, yeah, we have enough land. Yeah. And no one should have food insecurity. Right. But, right. you know, right. let's just keep this thing real. Yeah. Um, right. But there, 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 there are folks out there who have food insecurity. That's right. And there are folks out there who don't have the opportunity yeah. 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 to have fresh. Right. So th there's a there's another method to my own madness. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. why do I grow so much? You, you heard me say that at some point you might see 30, 40 containers. Right. My yard is not that big. I, I showed you all that. Yeah, yeah, but one yeah. of the main reasons why I also do this, I can almost tell you that I probably only eat 20, maybe maybe 30 percent of whatever it is I grow. Mm -hmm. The rest mm -hmm. of it, you know, I give it away. And, you know, some yeah. of my friends want to, you know, compensate me. And that's great because right. I spend thousands on this stuff. Right. Um, hundreds for Good sure. Job. In the beginning, I spent thousands just getting everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it costs a lot of money to do this right. Yes, it does. And so friends will come by and I'll just tell them to pick something. And I say, hey, I'm, I'm not looking for anything. But right. my point is, I give a lot of this away. Yes. And um, I also take some of my food to uh, um, to to um, shelters and um, yeah, I, I take yeah. some of my plants to not no not to a shelter. I actually um, I'm a part of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as I share with you, Kevin, this weekend, I yeah. was at our national convention. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's called the North Atlantic Region uh, Regional Conference that I just came back from in, in, in Philly. Yes. And I'm also on the Enhance Our Environment Committee. In fact, I'm the chair of the committee for oh, my local wow. chapter. Oh, well, that's great. And, and, and we work in DC. So yeah. I last year, like I grew a lot of extra and I took it over to the um, it's a place called Martha's Kitchen okay. in oh, Washington. Yeah. Yeah. And I took my plants and I planted it in their garden. Right. 
so that, that they could give it to the community out there yeah. because it's an underserved community that we serve in Washington, D.C. Even though I'm in Maryland, I do right. go to Washington, D.C. Right. to do my service work in Southeast and Southwest Washington. Yeah, Doc, yeah. So I give plants to, to, to some of the places there that then feed the community. Yeah. In my end, I would love to make that possible here. And that's a that's another day for me, even. That's something else. But yeah. I give it away. I give yeah. it to my neighbors. Yeah. Food yeah. is to be shared. I mean, I, I can't yeah. eat half the stuff. Oh, that no, I, no. That's the whole purpose of that, Doc. I agree. I, I really can't. Exactly. I really can't eat it all. And that's and a great I, point, too, Doc. I like the, the fact that you're giving back. And guys, so when you have abundance, you can actually share it with your neighbor first, you know, yeah. oh, family yeah. members, whatever. That's perfect, Doc. I like that. that, that and I do. I share it with my neighbors. Yeah. I, I have neighbors on both sides and across me. And you all will see this. Yeah. And maybe we'll, it'll be a nice day one day and they'll be out and, and oh, yeah. they'll come over and I'll, you know, you'll see. I tell them to come in the yard. Yeah. But I have a community garden right on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you that as I plant and get ready for my community garden as well. But yeah, I'll have my neighbors just come it. in. And I, I tell them very honestly, just just be mindful. Yeah, exactly. And you don't take all the tomatoes off the tree. Right, exactly. Take one or two for yourself so that somebody exactly. else can come and have another one. Exactly. Right. That's it. So yeah. um, but yeah, just just think about giving back. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I have humble beginnings. Kevin and I um both have humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and I'm a humble person, so I don't take any of this for granted. Yeah. Um, and I do believe in sharing. Absolutely. Um, that's so, a must. Anyway, that is a must. And, and gardening, guys, that's a must. I mean, even if you're just sharing with your family, that's enough right there. But the point is, if you have more, you share it with those you like to share it with, okay? But that's up absolutely. to you. That's up to y'all. I, I think most of my yeah. audience would, is, is you guys are all givers anyway out there. Everybody I know on the network, you guys are givers. So we know you want to garden so you can bless somebody else too. That's wonderful. I like that concept. I love it. So if you if you get three tomatoes, give one away. Yeah, exactly. In fact, give two away. Keep one for yourself. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So I anyway, this is the start. This is how you start, folks. Yep, exactly. Okay. This is this is this. You do this for every one on one. Every plant. I love it, Doc. I tell you, hey guys, we got to get out of here because Doc's busy. I'm busy. Everybody's busy out there today. It's a beautiful Saturday, guys, and I'm thanking Doc for being with us today as well on the network. Actually, it's Monday, right? Monday today. I wish it was Saturday. I know. I wish. I like a Saturday, exactly. So, guys, hey, we're talking about gardening tips 101. We want to encourage you guys to dive in and to learn from Doc on how to get started for your own purposes, guys. Some of you have land. Some of you have big backyards. Some of you have side yards, you know. We've seen people have gardens on the side of the house, on the left or right side, in the back. So whatever it takes, guys, we want you to get more involved in gardening. Also, too, get your children involved, guys. I'll get their grandchildren, nieces, nephews, sons and daughters. Get them involved to learning how to do this as well. Uh, plot your land or get your land plotted there or find out a little spot on your backyard and plant something, guys, and have some fun. And Excuse me, Kevin, uh, just yes, real quick. I, yes. I'm sorry oh, to interrupt, yeah. but I don't want to forget the light. Oh, yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, okay, ooh, I just beautiful. I didn't want to forget that because we did yeah. say, now, do you, you see those little lights sticking up? Yeah, that's beautiful, Doc. LEDs, those are LED lights. Yeah, there's a little lights, and one has three. Um, yeah. Some have two. That's beautiful, Some Doc. Some have three. Now, see, these aren't, by, they, they need more. These are a lot of cacti. It's cacti right, definitely right. need light. Oh, all right. Absolutely. And if you, if you look down, you can see all the water yeah. that I have. And I just yeah. want you to see this. But this yes. is also I got um, this. You see this right here? Yeah. I got this from Home Depot. Yeah, exactly. The workman lights. Exactly. Exactly. And I just put a plant. Remember, I said you could put a, a bulb. Yep. yep. I just put an LED plant bulb in that. Yeah. And exactly. um, this is what happens. I That's turn beautiful, Doc. I love it. I Ooh. turn this off. Yeah. Because of the lighting. Right, right. But this is really what it will look like before uh -huh. we go. I know we have to go, Kevin. Take your time. Let me go ahead. show you this. I want to show guys how, how advanced you are. <laughs> so this is what's going to happen here. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Look at that. See? Yeah. So amazing. I cut it off because it was just taken right. away. From, I understand. That is beautiful. Right? So yes, look at that. That's so beautiful. I love so I have it angled. And that's and inside the house, water. guys. This is inside you see the, all the water jugs. Yeah, beautiful. 
And um, so that's literally what happens. And they're on a timer. And oh, so this it. will go off. I set yeah. it. Um, I have to change the time because at East, you know, we changed right, uh, right. sprung forward. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, so I'll God. fix this. But anyway, that's that's yeah, really that's what you want to do with your grow lights. I love the guy. I look like an artist there. Like you just kind of painted all that stuff there. That's beautiful. I like it, guys. Hey guys, this is so thank beautiful. you. Thank home you, Kevin. Gardening. Home garden is also an art, guys. And I can you can have some fun, especially inside the house, guys. And we want you to enjoy Doc as she shares more information about this. So hey, we're with Ask the Nurse, Dr. Proctor, Lady Gentlemen, Dr. T. Victoria Proctor, my wonderful cousin, Lisa. She's a doctor of nursing uh, practice and also a holistic doctor as well. She's a holistic and health professional. Guys, she knows her stuff in that area. And this is what it's all about, to get you to your optimum self through better gardening or through gardening as well. So I'm excited about that. Doc, I can't wait for folks to get. I want, I want to hear some feedback from you guys out there. I want you guys to push this one out to everybody on the planet in your social media platform as well. I think last time we looked, Doc, uh, on YouTube, we had over uh, oh, up to three or four hundred, almost three hundred, uh, over wow. three hundred people viewed uh, your series here. So I'm excited about that. I want you guys to take this up to five hundred on this one here too, or more. So thank you so much for your time today, Doc. Any final thoughts before we let you go? No. Uh, well, yeah, of course, always something final to say. So Absolutely. just know that you can do this. Start. Yeah. Start yeah. small. You have cinnamon in your yeah. closet. Yeah. If you don't have diatomaceous earth, you don't have to go out and buy any. You have wow. cinnamon. There are other things that you can do. Please yeah. don't feel compelled to, to, these are just suggestions. Yeah. And um, whatever you do, just do it from your heart, you know, and it's going to work out okay. I mean, that's, that's the, that's the take home message. Yep. Just get started and be excited about it. And if you have any questions, please. Please submit them. However you submit them, submit them to my cousin Kevin, and yes. and I'm happy to answer them. And just thank you all for being present. And yeah. Kevin, thank you for the opportunity again. Oh, absolutely, cuz thank you so much for your time today. Hey guys, I want you to know I'm learning. I'm learning too with you guys as well. And I'm I haven't started my plant, but I got my seeds, guy. I got all I got to do is get them in the in the soil, as Doc just showed me how to do. I'm gonna get me a few more parsley and time. Oh, we got those okay. right there, guys. Okay. So. You guys get see your, how little they are. They do come yeah, small. Look little man, look at the little. I don't know if you can see. It look like little tiny mm -hmm. bugs in there. Almost, they're very tiny on these. But that powerful guys right there. So I'm excited. So Doc, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, it's this my pleasure. This is one of the best programs on the planet right now, guys. I can tell you that without a doubt. I can tell you, there's only one Ask the Nurse Doctor Proctor. I can tell you that on the planet. So we're excited about that. Hey guys, we appreciate your time. Hey, uh, we want you guys to share this out on your network. Give me some feedback on this as well. Hey, lastly, guys, I want you to always remember to out love, out serve, and out forgive each other. And remember, there's nothing you can't do in gardening, guys, with Ask the Nurse Dr. Proctor. Doc, cuz, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Hey, See man. you all soon. All right. Y'all have a great day today, okay? Be intentional and uh, keep that smile. Definitely on. be intentional. Amen. That's right. God bless. Thank you so much, Doc.